Hi. Hello there. If you saw my previous video, you'd know that I created the best team for Pokemon Emerald. Well, I think it's the best team. Then again, Mystic Umbreon is his best team. Actually two, because his first one was heavily criticized by his viewers, and the second one also has his fair share of criticisms. There are also other videos talking about their best teams. You see the problem here? Anyone can create their own team for Pokemon Emerald and call it the very best. But it doesn't mean shit unless you can demonstrate your team's ability by actually playing Pokemon Emerald with that team. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. I will be narrating what happened when I played through Pokemon Emerald with my best team. I am pretty confident that once you are finished watching this video, you will agree with me that this is the best team. However, if you don't, feel free to bash me in the comment section below. I love myself some haters. Their hate validates my existence in this world. So give me all you got. Alright, let me get the sponsor out of the way so that we can get straight into it. Wait a minute! Okay, you got me. I still don't have a sponsor. I haven't even reached the 10 sub count yet. Subscribe. So I'm introduced to Professor Birch and arrive in Little Root Town, where I have to set my clock and meet the waifu of this game, May. After doing that, I walk out into Route 101 to see Professor Birch being chased around by a Zigzagoon. The professor asks me to pick a Pokemon from his bag to save him from this dangerous little creature. I choose Mudkip and make quick work of the Zigzagoon. Then we go back to his lab and he gives me the Mudkip as a thank you gift. I nickname him Bruno, since that name sounds pretty Chad to me. And come on, who won one the little Bruno in their life? <laughs> After this I go out to meet Mei at Route 103 and battle her for the first time. I spam tackle to get a donor over with and we head back to the professor's lab again. We get our Pokedex and some Pokeballs and I'm about to head out on my journey when my mama stops me to give me some running shoes first. You know I just realized that Brendan and Mei have a lot of stamina because they're pretty much spending their entire journey across Hoenn running everywhere. At a consistent speed too with no signs of slowing down. I on the other hand am already running out of breath just finishing this sentence. You know what? Maybe I should start working out again. I've gotten really lazy lately ever since the pandemic started and I lost all my gains from lifting So I had Wes and a bunch of new gamers on my way to Battlebrook City, help Wally catch Ralts, and search for Ralts of my own. While searching, I was trying to think of a good nickname to give her. When I look at Gardevoir, I see an individual that exudes grace and beauty. She has an elegant charm that is reminiscent of a ballerina. Coming up with a name to capture Gardevoir's magnificent aura was no easy task, but through persistence, and the power of friendship, I came up with the perfect name. When I finally found Ralts, I was going to name her- <laughs> Oh, it's a dude. So we're going to need a guy's name that captures that same aura I just described instead. But what man could embody such a character? We then head into Rustboro Forest and deal with the Pesce Aquagrunt and proceed to search for our third member, Slackoth, because of how abundant he is in the area. And I'm being sarcastic. He was very easy to find. It only took a short 30 minutes of running around in the grass and running into a million Puchianas. Oh, and I missed Jennifer again because he's actually a girl. I decided to name her Maria. For reasons. <laughs> Now that we got Maria on our team, we head towards Rustboro City. On our way there, we battle a bunch of trainers, including some rich dude who uses a fuller star on his Zigzagoon. Like, come on dude, it makes more sense to use the equivalent amount of regular potions, or super potions on the guy, for the same amount of money since they'll fully restore his HP with every use, unlike the fuller star which only works once. Well, it turns out that affluence doesn't necessarily translate to aptness, as you can see. When we're in Rustboro, we head straight to the gym to battle Roxanne. I'm not too worried entering into this battle since I have Mudkip who knows a water type move. The battle should be a piece of cake. The 
The battle is a piece of cake on the second try. After we get the badge, we save an old man from another aqua noob and are tasked by Mr. Stone to give Stephen a letter in Duford and deliver some goods to Captain Stern. It turns out that saving the old man was not a complete waste of time since we can use him to get their Duford. Upon arriving there, I head towards Granite Kid to hand Stephen the letter and catch a Zubat along the way. I nickname him Sonic since Speedo sounds Sonic, he is agile, and has purple in his clothing, both being traits found in Crobat. Though Crobat does not wear clothes, he just has purple skin, but eh, you probably get the point. Bruno also evolves into Marsh Tom. Then we challenge Duford Jim. Now this battle requires a little strategy to take down, though it's very doable. Yonko can take care of Bali's matchup, and it can beat Metatite so long as you spam attack moves since he will always use Focus Punch. Makuhita is the potentially problematic Pokemon to beat since it first sets up with a couple of bulk ups, making it a strong tank. The key to beating him is using Bruno's Mud Shot to slow him down, and maybe add a couple of Mud Slaps while you're at it to mess with his accuracy. When that is done, I sub in Jungkook for Bruno so that Jungkook can get it some chip damage before Bruno finishes him off. I get my second badge and head to Salataport. After I beat all the Team Aqua Grunts that come at me while I deliver the goods to Captain Stern, I head back to Rustboro City and grab the experience share from Mr. Stone as additional payment for doing his dirty work. Then I make my way back to Salataport City and catch an Electrike. I name him Snowy, after the dog from the Tintin series. If you don't know what Tintin is, it is a comic book series that was adapted into an animated series that aired in the 1990s. It holds a bigger place to me because I dedicated my high school and some of my college life reanimating five of those episodes in LEGO. I'll provide a link in the description if you're interested in watching. And who knows, I might resume reanimating other episodes in the future. I run into Mei on Route 110 and beat her by having Snowy paralyze her Grovile and having all my other Pokemon deal chip damage before Bruno finishes them off. When I get to Marvel City, I see Wally in front of the electric gym, and he challenges me to a battle. I use Sonic against his routes, and I'm able to take him out with Bite in two turns, which surprises me since Bite is not a stab move, and Zubat is not exactly a special attacker. Goes to show how frail Waltz is when it has not evolved into Gardevoir. Or maybe Wally just sucks. The good is I gave him a redemption arc in the Ruby and Sapphire remix. Anyways, after beating him, I sweep through the electric gym with Bruno, since his ground typing makes Waltz's Pokemon powerless against him. It is on the fiery path on my way to Fal Arbor Town that I run into the team's last member, Matchup. Upon catching her, I nickname her Mikasa, because it just makes sense. Then I run past Fall Arbor Town and head towards Meteor Falls to be introduced to Team Magma, an antagonist that has goals conflicting with Team Aquas. They take their quarrel to Mount Chimney, and it is up to a 12-year-old kid to resolve their conflict, albeit temporarily. Bradley Maxi was a bit annoying since I could not one-shot all of his Pokemon, but it was not too much trouble. Once that is done, I head towards Laverage Town to challenge Flannery. Her Slugba, Nummel, and Camerupt are frail and pose no threat, but her Tarkoal is a pretty annoying without a game plan. Taking him down is a matter of having Snowy paralyze him and a few other members deal chip damage to him before he is within range of being finished off by a Pokemon who has a type advantage, in this case being Bruno. After taking down Flannery, I head back to Petalburg to challenge my daddy to a spanking contest, but not before Mikasa evolves into Machoke. It is then time for me to trade her to myself and back to evolve her into Machamp. <coughs> Jungkook evolves into Curlia as well. Mikasa sweeps Daddy's first three Pokemon, Bruno uses a Mud Shot and Mud Slap on Slacking, then Snowy paralyzes him before being taken out. Jungkook manages to take out half of Slacking's health, even while not fully evolved. Yeah, well he definitely just sucks. Before Slacking finally lands a facade. Then Mikasa finishes him off with Low Kick. Pretty easy battle. But wait, did you notice something? See the disparity in levels between my Pokemon? Yeah, beating my daddy was not too hard but only because I had been preparing for him since I caught Mikasa on the fiery path. I gave her the experience share and have been using all the fights I happen to have partaken in solely to grind her to a high enough level to evolve her into Machamp. I had to do this in order to prevent myself from having to mindlessly grind on a bunch of wild Pokemon and still manage to beat my daddy on the first try with an overall extremely underleveled team. The battle with Flannery was just a stepping stone in preparing for this fight. Do not think for a minute that just because I managed to beat Norman on my first try, that his notoriety as a difficult battle is unearned. Had I not planned ahead for this gym, I would definitely have been at an impasse. Before heading up to Fortress City, I surfed from Slatterport City to get the Ice Beam TM. On my first trip to the abandoned ship, I got lost and assumed I needed the Dive HM to get it when I found a room that stuck off from the others that were full of trainers. I surfed back to Slatterport City 
and was very close to the Weather Institute when I realized I was in the right direction on the abandoned ship the whole time and did not see the only path I was supposed to take to get the key to unlock the door on the previous floor. So I had to run all the way back to Route 118 and surf across the Mallville so I could return to Zlatopor City and visit the abandoned ship for a second time. <laughs> At least Maria evolved into Vigoroth for those troubles. I meet Steven and take out the Cuckleon, blocking our way so that I can use the Devon Scope to enter the 6th gem. The reason I went through the trouble of retrieving Ice Beam was so I could teach it to Bruno. That was all I needed to take out our only threat, Altaria. Winning the 6th badge was a breeze. After this, both Team Aqua and Magma are up to no good, and I have to battle them for some reason. I mean, after losing, they still push through with their original objectives anyway. Maxi awakens Groudon, and Archie steals a submarine to head towards Kyogre. My battling them does nothing to stop them, but I, I don't mind the extra XP, so I guess that is fine. I surf towards Moss Deep City to challenge the 7th gem. Now if you remember, I identified this gem as a primary obstacle for beating Pokemon Emerald in the best team video. The reason is that even with the best team, the right strategy to beat Tate and Liza with an underlevel team is not as obvious as the other gems because there is not one kind of typing that will single-handedly take out all of their Pokemon. I grinded up Mikasa before challenging Tormund to take him down. This time, I grinded Bruno and Jungkook while fighting Team Aqua and Magma to evolve Bruno into Swampert and Jungkook into Gardevoir. Even so, this gem will turn out to be the most difficult one to take down. On my first attempt, I opened with Jungkook and Bruno, my plan being to use Imprison and Spam Surf to take out Claydol. However, I underestimated how powerful its Earthquake is, and it takes out Jungkook in two turns. Without Jungkook to prevent Tate and Liza's Pokemon from using Psychic, the rest of my team is sweeped. On my second try, I open with Maria and Bruno. My plan is to have Maria use Return on Claydol and have Bruno use Surf to whittle down Claydol's health. This was not a bad plan, except it turns out that Zatu outspeeds Maria, and Claydol took half of her health in the first turn meaning Zatu will most likely target her in the next. I decide to switch her out and sack Mikasa since her typing is weak against Psychic Pokemon, and then I sack Snowy as well since he's only useful for taking out Zatu. In retrospect, it would've been better if I had Sonic enter instead, but I was grinding his friendship and didn't want him to faint as much as possible. I was hoping that Bruno's next surf would do the trick to take out Claydol, but unfortunately it survived by Sliver. I bring back in Maria to continue the original plan while Tate and Liza heal Claydol, but I forgot that Bruno had lost half of his health as well, and Zatu finishes him off. This takes away my chance of defeating Claydol, so I soft reset instead of further delaying Sonic's evolution to Crobat. On my third attempt, I open with Snowy and Bruno. I have Snowy use Thunderbolt on Zatu to at least deal some damage to him before he gets taken out by Claydol's Earthquake. I bring in Maria after Snowy faints. As Zatu's health is lower than half, I decide to have Maria target him with this return instead of Claydol so that combined with Bruno's Surf, they can take him out. Unfortunately, his boost to Psychic is enough to take her out in one hit. Well, she is 10 levels weaker than Zatu and has not yet evolved, so. I shouldn't be too surprised. I summon Mikasa, since it is still not safe to bring in Jungkook and I do not want Sonic to faint. Bruno Surf, which is boosted now thanks to Torrent, manages to bring out both Zatu and Claydol's red health, which puts us in an advantageous position since Tate and Liza now have to heal both of their Pokemon. Bruno uses Surf once again, and Mikasa uses Slow Kick on Claydol. This is a golden opportunity to take out Claydol, but I do not want to make the same mistake of allowing Zatu to finish off a weakened Bruno. Luckily, I can still attack with Bruno and heal him on the same turn, thanks to this being a double battle. I heal him on Mikasa's turn and use Surf. This turns out to be the right decision, as Bruno has his tank hits from both Zatu and Claydol. He just barely survives. Junko comes in after Mikasa faints and as Bruno finishes off Claydol, Tate and Liza send out Solrock. I have Junko use Imprison and heal up Bruno, while Tate and Liza prepare to have Solrock use Solar Beam. I sub in Sonic for Bruno, who easily tanks that Solar Beam, while Junko uses Calm Mind. By this point, Zatu is a useless dud offensively, and Solrock cannot use any stab moves. I have Jungkook spam Calm Mind a few more times while Sonic uses Bite on Solrock, then two work together to take down Solrock. Because of Imprison, Lunatone has no offensive move he can use upon entering the battlefield while Jungkook is there, and Jungkook is not going anywhere. The battle drags out for a while because Zatu and Lunatone spam Confuse Ray and Hypnosis respectively, and Lunatone also knows Light Scream, but will eventually emerge victorious against Tate and Liza. Also, Sonic evolves into Crobat. At long last, we were able to take down the hardest part of this Pokemon Emerald run so far. If Jungkook were not on the team, the Imprison strategy would not have been possible to pull off, and it would have had to grind a Pokemon to a higher level just to take down this gym. However, we are not yet done. Team Magma is still causing trouble, and we still have to search for Team Aqua. By this point in the journey, Maria is the only Pokemon who has not evolved into her final form, so I give her the experience share and grind her levels while battling them and searching for Rayquaza to have him or her calm down Groudon and Kyogre. Then I prepare to battle the last gym.
In my best team video, I lost my cool a little bit. Motherfucking hey, big smoke! It's me! I'm thinking about one's Kingdra. I think it's better to show you why rather than explain it. I thought Maria would be strong enough to one-shot Kingdra with Focus Punch, but I was wrong. And this time, her Truant ability really made things a lot harder since it gave Juan free turns to spam double team. I lost to Juan on my first try. On my second try, I planned to try using Hyper Beam instead, but it also did not one-shot. I figured I would just hope to get lucky and keep spamming it, which is not much different compared to what I did the first time, but Kingdra just kept spamming rest and double team, making such a strategy useless. He also managed to bring down Maria to 1 HP and freeze her. I had to look for another way. I sacked Sonic since he will not do much anyway thanks to Kingdra knowing Ice Beam, then I decided to bring in Junko. Only then does it occur to me that I can set up Calm Mind so that I do not have to worry about taking too many hits from Kingdra. I max out his special attack and defense while one maxes out Kingdra's evasiveness. I then heal up Jungkook and the real battle begins. Kingdra uses Water Pulse and Jungkook uses Psychic, which hits on the first try and one-shots Kingdra. The 8th badge is mine. Jungkook is the reason I was able to take down two of the hardest obstacles in the game. The strategies I use are also consistently reliable so long as your opponents do not land a critical hit. There are no other Pokemon I know that enable teams to beat these two gyms at such an underleveled state. If you're wondering why Jungkook is at the center of my thumbnail for the best team video, there's a reason. All that is left now is the Pokemon League. Okay, before narrating what took place here, it is about time I elaborate on the rules I use for Pokemon playthroughs. If you are observant enough, you'd know that I use items, but this is not without restrictions. First off, I am not allowed to revive Pokemon in the middle of battle, and X items cannot be used at all. I can only heal the HP of the Pokemon that is currently in battle, so no switching out a weakened Pokemon and healing it while another Pokemon is sapped. Also, my Pokemon's HP has to be less than half before I can use an item. I gave myself these rules because this is how the AIs use items, so it puts us on a more even playfield. However, I also gave myself another rule specific to the Elite Four. I am not allowed to revive fainted Pokemon until after I have defeated all of them, meaning that if 5 out of my 6 Pokemon faint in the first battle, my last Pokemon will have to shoulder the rest of the Elite Four by him or herself. I made this rule because I would use so many revives before against the Elite Four and still end up losing, which devastated me financially since I could not afford to replace all the items I used. Lastly, I am allowed to play in shift mode until I face a champion. The reason behind this is that my Pokemon are still training to reach their highest potential, even at the Elite Four. Yeah, I use the Elite Four to grind my Pokemon. If I cannot revive my Pokemon before each battle of the Elite Four, the difference in difficulty between set and shift mode is astronomical, an added obstacle which I do not think is necessary for proving the strength of a Pokemon team. By the way, I did soft reset a bunch of times for some battles because I was still in the process of looking for an ideal strategy to take down each Elite Four member, and I'm not restarting from the first member because of a lack of knowledge. If there is a way for my team to win at a lower level, I am going to find it. Beating the Elite Four and champion with a team only because they are at a higher level removes all meaning from it being the best team, since any team with the right type of matchups can do that. So I want to complete the journey with my team being as underleveled as possible. The difference in minimum levels of each Pokemon needed to beat the game is what sets apart a good team from a great one. If a team is capable of beating the game at 5 levels lower than another one, it is a superior team because it could win despite its members being significantly weaker individually. Beating Sydney is pretty straightforward. Maria takes care of Absol since Aerial Ace would take out Mikasa and I'm not taking that risk. Sonic sweeps Cacturn and Shift Tree and Snowy one-shots Crawdunt. Taking out Phoebe is a matter of using Jungkook to deal damage to her first Dust Clops since she will not attack unless she has used Confusory or Curse first and Jungkook outspeeds her. Once Dust Clops has used either of these moves, switch into Maria for free since she is immune to Ghost moves and finish her off with Shadow Ball. Keep Maria to fight against the first Bandit and use one Shadow Ball and switch to Jungkook if that Bandit uses Grudge. Then bring back Maria to finish her off. Bruno takes out Sablai with two Earthquakes, then Maria sweeps the other Bayonet and Dusclops. The hard part of Elite 4 comes from Glacia, because while I have two Pokemon with type advantages against Ice types, three of her Pokemon are either Celio or Walrein, who are super bulky Pokemon that can take many hits and deal a lot of neutral damage, and her two Glalies outspeed Mikasa, limiting her ability to steer the momentum of the match in our favor. On my first attempt, I open with Mikasa and have her use Low Kick on her first Celio. I'm able to take her out in two turns. Then Glacia sends out her first Glalie, who brings out Mikasa to red health and freezes her, disabling her from being able to attack. 
I heal her, but each of Glalie's ice beams bring her to less than half health, so she cannot do anything to take out Glalie. I switch to Jungkook. My plan is to have Jungkook maximize her special defense and attack since the ice type is special. I do this and take out the first Glalie. However, it turns out that the second Glalie knows Shadow Ball, which is a physical move, and takes out Jungkook. I bring in Maria to finish her off. But guess what? This Glalie also knows Explosion, and takes out Maria with her. The second Celio takes out Snowy with one Blizzard and also outspeeds Mikasa who has low health. Using items on her is pointless, so I let her to get taken out. I send in Bruno to try to finish her off with Rock Tomb, but she survives by just a little, and Celio uses a track on Bruno. Then, Glacia uses a full restore. I try to force the issue, but a track limits the number of Rock Tombs I can use, and each Blizzard deals a lot of neutral damage. I could stall using items to get rid of Celio's PP for Blizzard, but then there's still wall range to deal with. Bruno and Sonic would not be able to handle that Pokemon by themselves, considering how much trouble they're having with Celio. So I let them lose instead of wasting my items and a force restart the Leaf 4. Thinking back, I could have soft reset here since my loss was a result of lacking knowledge for certain moves. But since I nearly beat her, it did not occur to me until after I saved before fighting Sydney for a second time, so it was too late. So copy paste the strategy I used for Sydney and Phoebe, and we are at our second attempt for Glacia. I leave with Snowy this time and opt to save Mikasa for the other Pokemon. Snowy takes her out swiftly with two Thunderbolts. Jungkook takes out the first Glalie with the same Calm Mind strategy. Then I send in Maria to battle her second Glalie, who again takes her down with Explosion. I send in Mikasa to battle Glalie's second Celio, but Mikasa is taken out by a critical hit. Snowy takes her out while setting up Hail. Walrein is sent in and one shot Snowy. I send in Bruno to spam Rock to him and bring down Walrein's speed. When Bruno has less than half his health, I send in Sonic to be sacked, but Walrein uses Surf. I have Sonic use Confuse Ray and Walrein hurts herself. Sonic uses Sludge Bomb while Glacia heals Walrein and manages to poison her. Then Mulrain finishes Sonic. I send in Jungkook to finish the job. His health is less than half, so I heal just to be safe. Unfortunately, Mulrain's Ice Beam deals enough damage to take Jungkook's health below half, even though he has high special defense. Since items won't do anything for Jungkook long term, I use Calm Mind, hoping the boosted special defense will allow him to survive another hit. He gets hit by Ice Beam and is taken down to 1 HP. This is my chance. I heal up Jungkook and prepare to spam more Calm Minds. But, while Rain's Surf lands a critical hit. To make things worse, Glacia uses another Pull Restore since while Rain's Poison brought her down to red health. This battle is lost. On the third attempt, Snowy takes out the first Helio like last time. I have Maria take care of the first Glalie this time instead of Jungkook, though it takes a while since Glalie manages to freeze her twice and the turn I heal her is on one of her non chewing turns, making her unable to move for quite a while. I had to switch her off for jump with the big Glalie into using a dark type move so as to not deal so much damage to Maria upon switching in. I bring out Bruno to slow down the second Celio's speed so that Mikasa could finish her off, but not before having to sack Sonic first. I send out Bruno against the second Glalie as well. I heal him up, but her ice beam deals exactly half damage. I decide to risk losing Bruno and use Rock Tomb which pays off since she uses Hail. I then heal Bruno up again, hoping to get lucky with Glalie's damage counter to no avail. I use Rock Tomb again, but miss. Everything ends well though since Glacia decided to use Explosion, so I do not have to worry about which Pokemon I will use to finish up Glalie. I send out Snowy against her while Rain and paralyze her before she takes him out. Then I send out Mikasa to deal one low kick which takes more than half of her health before she's defeated. In comes Maria, and while Rain eats her Citrus Berry. It does not make a difference though since Maria's Hyper Beam is strong enough to finish her. I finally beat Glacia. With both Hate and Liza and Glacia, I beat them on a the third try. Looks like the third time really is a charm, huh? Anyways, on to Drake. Beating Drake is normally easy, except because of my rules, I can only use Maria and Jungkook to do it since they are not taken out by Glacia. Bruno was taken out, so I cannot rely on him to take out most of Drake's members with his Ice Beam. I was not sure if pulling off such a feat was possible, but alas, after playing out with strategies and a couple of soft resets, I found a solution. I open up a Jungkook and have him use Calm Minds and Shell Gun will always use Protect on the first turn. Then I use Psychic on the second turn and almost one-shot him, which is pretty impressive considering the 12 level gap between our Pokemon. I have Jungkook use Confusion as Shell Gun is healed up and it lands a critical hit, dealing as much as Psychic. Drake does have Spam Full Restore so I take him out. Drake brings out Fly Gun and I bring in Maria. I use Return and Maria is strong enough to tank two Earthquakes, the second one being due to Truant, and she finishes off Fly Gun. Drake brings in Altaria, and I heal Maria on her true in turn. Altaria lands a Dragon Breath and paralyzes Maria while Maria is healed up. Her next return lands a critical hit, but Altaria still survives by a little. 
I let Truant do its thing, assuming Drake will use a full restore, but instead he takes out his Alteria with the recoil from using Double Edge. This puts Maria in a bad position, since I am forced to heal her up on a non-Truant turn when Kingdra enters the battlefield. Kingdra is given two free attacks as a result of healing and the subsequent Truant, which puts Maria in red health. This cycle will continue on and on unless I run out of items or Kingdra lands a critical hit. So I heal her up one more time and take one Surf, then sack Jungkook to reset the Truant cycle. She deals one return to Kingdra, then is taken down to red health. I heal her up, then bring down Kingdra to red health. I am also brought to red health, and we both heal our Pokemon. I deal another return, then Kingdra uses Smoke Screen. I finish Kingdra off with Hyper Beam. Out comes Salamence, and he brings Maria down to red health. I have to heal her on her non druin turn, and this time I have no Pokemon to reset her druin cycle. We're in for a long ride. See, it is technically possible for me to just heal Maria twice in a row to reset the cycle, but if you remember, I made it a rule that I am not allowed to heal my Pokemon unless they are taken down to below half of their health. Salamence, despite being a pseudo-legendary, is so weak that one attack is not guaranteed to take Maria down to less than half health. And remember, this is while being 12 levels higher than Maria. Starting to see how strong slacking is now? I had to keep healing Maria until Salamence landed a Dragon Claw on the highest damage roll to go at long last deal a little bit more than half damage. I heal up Maria and deal one return before having to deal up again, but then Salamence lands a critical hit flamethrower which takes three-fourths of Maria's health. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Fortunately, it only takes one heal before Salamence lands another Dragon Claw on the highest damage counter. With the Truant Cycle reset, Maria finishes off Salamence with a Hyper Beam. Maria is a fucking trooper, okay? None of my other Pokemon, not even Bruno because of King's water typing, would have been able to single-handedly take out all of Drake's Pokemon the way she did. Well, yeah, Jungkook took care of Shellgun, but he was the weakest of the five, meaning Maria could have beaten him too if it was necessary. And she did that with non-boosted neutral normal attacks and while being 10 levels weaker than Drake's Pokemon. She even had her attack weakened due to Salamence's Intimidate and still took him out. Do you honestly believe that any other Pokemon at her level could have done the same thing? I will fight anyone who continues to give Maria or slacking shit because of Truant. She pulled through and defeated the strongest member of the Elite Four while being underleveled and while being crippled by Truant. She deserves her spot on the best team. So I heal up my remaining Pokemon, change my setting to set mode, and prepare to fight Champion Wallace. I send out Snowy to take care of Wailord, and he sends out Gyarados. It turns out that Snowy is too underleveled to one-shot Gyarados with Thunderbolt despite the 4 times weakness. Yeah, I soft reset it after learning this. So I switch to Sonic anticipating an Earthquake, but he uses Surf. Sonic still does his job though and deals chip damage to Gyarados before being taken out. Then I summon Snowy once again and finish him off. Wallace sends in Whiskash. I do not have any Pokemon to clean switch, so I use Toxic and allow Whiskash to take out Snowy. I send in Mikasa hoping she'll be able to finish the job, but she's taken out as well. Maria manages to push through. After Wallace brings in Tentacruel, I switch to Bruno on the turn that Maria's truant takes effect. It turns out to be a free switch since Tentacruel uses Toxic and misses. He poisons Bruno on the next turn, and Bruno brings him to red health with Earthquake. Wallace uses a full restore, and Tentacruel is brought down to red health again. Wallace decides to spam full restores until Bruno's poison brings his health down low enough for Tentacruel to be able to finish him off with one Hydro Pump. A full restore? Wow, so you're that kind of player! Next I send in Jungkook. Rather than immediately finishing off Tentacruel, I decide to use him to set up Calm Mind. I spam that move until I am forced to heal Jungkook, then I finish off Tentacruel with Confusion. I forgot that Sludge Bomb is a physical move, so I have to heal him again as soon as Ludicola enters the battlefield. Then I use Psychic and manage to land a critical hit on him, taking him out with one shot. Now, before you start going into the comments section saying I got lucky, notice how little damage Giga Drain dealt Jungkook while I was healing him up. I would have beaten him anyway. Wallace sends up Milotic, who tries poisoning Jungkook and spamming Surf, but Jungkook's special defense is too high for him to deal any significant damage. After we both heal once, Jungkook defeats the last of Wallace's Pokemon. We have beaten Pokemon Emerald. Allow me to summarize each of the members roles for the best team. Bruno was the anchor of our team for the first four gyms. He carried the team to beat Roxanne and Watson and his move Mudshot was crucial to slowing down Brawly's Makuhita so that the whole team could join forces to break him down. He also took out most of Flannery's Pokemon by himself. Snowy was responsible for paralyzing Flannery's Torkoal and Norman's Slacking to enable the other members to outspeed and take them both down together. Mikasa shouldered the rest of Norman's Pokemon and also helped take down Clayley's Ice-types. Bruno and Snowy working together defeated Winona. 
Jungkook single-handedly enabled us to defeat the 7th and 8th gyms, without having to do any extra grinding for our Pokemon. Maria worked with Jungkook and Bruno to take out Phoebe, and carried the team during the battle against Drake and took out all of his Pokemon with a little help from Jungkook. Sonic helped the team take out Sydney, and it was fast enough to deal the chip damage needed to wall this guy Aridos so that Snowy could finish him off. All six members working together were able to beat Champion Wallace while at a level where my strongest Pokemon was 11 levels weaker than his weakest Pokemon. I never had to go out of my way to grab my Pokemon before taking on any of my opponents throughout this journey. I have tried many teams with various combinations of Pokemon, but none have been able to perform the way this team did. I truly believe that this is the best team for Pokemon Emerald. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and maybe share it so that my video can reach a wider audience. If you think you have created a better team than mine, please don't hesitate to share it in the comment section below. I will be happy to test it out and compare it to mine. If your team turns out to be the superior one, I will showcase it on another video and make sure to give you your due credit. That's pretty much it guys. Until next time, Ifuego, signing out.